Welcome. On behalf of DCPS Speech and Language Department, I would like to welcome you to today's presentation. Today, you are going to learn how to increase your child's overall language through shared reading that you can do at home. By the end of this presentation, you will understand the speech language pathologist's role in reading, how reading relates to language development in the Common Core, what is shared literacy and its benefits, and how to utilize grade level books at home in order to increase your child's overall language skills. According to the American Speech and Language Hearing Association, the speech pathologist plays a critical and direct role in the development of literacy for children and adolescents with communication disorders, including those with severe or multiple disabilities. The speech pathologist provides the early language and metacognitive skills, which are crucial prerequisites to literacy. The speech pathologist's knowledge of phonemic awareness is crucial for early learners. Why is language and literacy important? Reiki's 2006 indicates that by the age of two, children who are read to regularly display greater language comprehension, vocabulary, and a higher cognitive skills compared to their peers. So research has indicated that strong connection between the development of literacy and oral language skills. It also indicates that young children whose oral language is not developing typically might not receive appropriate support or intervention and therefore may experience difficulty learning to read. According to the National Reading Panel of 2000, there are five pillars of reading. We have phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the building block of the smallest units of sound. So it's the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate individual sounds in spoken words. So for example, if your child is able to hear b, a, t, and know that the word is bat, then they have the strong phonemic awareness skill. Next we have is phonics. Phonics is the ability to link sounds and matching them to the letters to formulate a word. This skill improves word recognition, spelling, and reading comprehension, and is most effective when acquired early in elementary years. Then we have vocabulary. Vocabulary is often an indicator of reading fluency, reading comprehension, and a student's ability to acquire more novel word knowledge. Fluency. Fluency is the ability to read to appropriate levels automatically with expression and prosody. So for your child to be able to read and recognize the words in a smooth manner and to be able to express them and to be able to convey meaning. Last we have is comprehension. Comprehension is practically the sum of all four pillars, and it is the ultimate goal for the readers. If your child can extract meaning from a text and think critically about it, then they can comprehend. So according to the Workforce Investment Act of 1998, it defines literacy or reading as an individual's ability to read, write, speak English, compute, solve problems, at levels of proficiency necessary to function on the job, in the family, of the individual, and in their society. School generally starts at kindergarten. However, in DCPS, we have pre-kindergarten three and four in order to prepare our students with the language tools they need for kindergarten. Here are a few key skills that children in this age group should know, especially when it comes to language and literacy. So we have understanding object functions, frequently asked questions and demanding details, 1,200 to 2,000 or more one word receptive vocabulary words, 800 to 1,500 or more one word expressive vocabulary words, their grammar is starting to improve, and they're able to express 
at least two step events. When a child is learning a language, their receptive language is generally higher than their expressive. This is because they are watching and listening to their environment and trying to get a better understanding of what they see or do before practicing what they've learned. For the language development for the age group of four to five, we have understanding story sequencing, answering questions and simple questions such as who, what, and where. They're able to ask when and how questions, use word utterances up to four to eight. Their attention span has increased in order for them to listen to stories and answer simple questions about them. And they're also able to accurately relay a longer story with key details. When looking at the language development with the Common Core, your child has to be able to develop those language development skills in order to complete or master the Common Core skills. Once a child is able to cement those age-appropriate language developments, then they will be able to do the different skills that is expected of them in the areas of the Common Core. So when comparing the pre-K-3 and pre-K-4 language development, you can see here for kindergarten, if they're still being expected to learn the areas of asking WH questions, retelling simple stories, but now using critical thinking, understanding story sequencing, and the ability to enjoy listening to books for longer periods of time. So what we're doing here with the language development is we're building those skills. And when you're comparing it to the Common Core, they almost align with some prompting, right? As you can see with each bullet under the Common Core. So here we have grade one. So for grade one, when we're looking at language development, here it's indicating that a child is now basically expected to read in the first grade. So here we have use a variety of reading strategies such as ask questions or use visual cues and pictures. Um, under the language development we have reads and retells familiar stories, understand what was read, and reads grade level material. So when you look at the Common Core, it, it almost aligns. Um, the expectation is for the first grader to be able to ask and answer questions about key details in a text, uh, recall stories, including key details and demonstrates understanding of their central message or lesson, and then describes characters, settings, and major events in a story using key details. So when we look at the pre-K-3 and the pre-K-4, a lot of the Common Core, it was with prompting. As you can see here with the grade, with the first grade, the child is expected to be able to figure out the different questions with using the material that's in front of them. Again, what it says with the language development by uh, being able to read the different um, strategies uh, so that they can ask the questions and use the visual cues and pictures instead of the teacher always prompting them. So you could see with it, it really builds from the pre-K-3 to the pre-K-4 to grade to the first grade. Then you have the second grade. So the second grade for the language development, uh, this time the child is expected to understand and use time concepts in order of the story uh, telling. Uh, that's also with the sequencing, has a receptive vocabulary of approximately 20,000 words, what they understand. Now their grammar um, in conversation is used correctly with uh, correct word order. The uses of compound sentences such as uh, and, but, and or, and the ability to summarize information presented orally by others. So the Common Core again is, is um, somewhat aligned. Again, we have ans asking and answering WH questions, um, recount stories, including fables and folk tales from diverse cultures, describe how characters in a stories respond to major events and challenges, and then also being able to compare and contrast two or more versions of the same story. 
So what exactly is shared reading? So shared reading is the interaction that occurs when a child and adult look at or read a book um, together. So the research has shown that when children are engaged in conversation while reading books, uh, we see that there's growth in their understanding of what was read, uh, their language skills increases, including the number of words that they know and say, and it improves their abilities for uh, reading as they're getting older. So shared book reading strategies are a set of techniques that adults can use while reading a story to increase a child's engagement with that story. And as uh, the other bullets noted, the adult is not just reading to the child, but is also making statements and asking questions and allowing the child to participate. So using the interactive book reading strategies really helps with struggling readers to have support and participate in being able to enjoy the stories and allows the child to be able to access books that they may not be able to read on their own. So some of the benefits of shared reading is that it leads to successful vocabulary and, and grammar development, which then leads towards increasing vocabulary and understanding word relationships. It also allows your child's overall oral language skills to increase. And then the storybook reading has been found to be effective with improving social language, such as establishing and making joint attention and promoting conversational turn-taking. So this will then assist with social skills with same peers and adults within their communities. It also allows your child to make new, make connections with new information of what they already know, and it leads to understanding story structures. But what's important too is that it allows your child to build confidence in reading and it allows your child to be able to read books with the support of an adult. The Hannon program has a strategy called the OWL. It stands for Observe, Wait, and Listen. This is a simple way of finding out your child's interest and allowing your child to start and lead the interactions and makes the child feel heard. So when your child is reading together, you should O, observe what your child reacts to and what interests your child. W, wait. Sometimes as adults, we kind of talk too much. We need to stop speaking and allow your child to, to do more talking and then look at your child's reaction, facial expressions. Last is L. Let's listen. Pay close attention to what your child is telling you. So here are some strategies, parents, that you can utilize with your children. Let your child be in the driver's seat when it comes to choosing what they read so that it doesn't feel like work and it feels as though they're making choices in their learning decision. Now, if there's a particular book that you do want them to read, then give them two options, one being the book that you want them to read and have them make the choice. And then when they choose the book that they want and they don't choose the book that you want, then the next time they read a book, it'll be the second choice because those are the two options that you that you allowed them to, to have, right? Of which book they're going to read first. And then the last book that they didn't choose would, would be the book that they'll read next. Another thing is to read side by side with your child, especially when it comes to those books that shows a lot of drama or maybe different accents. It's really good for your child to be able to see your facial expressions and also to look at your mouth and how you form words and different sounds. The next one is have your child hold the book and turn the pages. That's way, that way they're involved and then they know how to hold a book and be able to turn the pages. That is a skill that children should be able to know in pre-K is how to hold the book upright and to be able to turn the pages. So if they're involved in doing that at home consistently, then they'll be able to transfer that skill into the classroom. The next one is let the child read. 
the book on their own. So for example, especially if it's a book that has a lot of um, details or illustration, have your child then retell the story using the pictures that they see. And with that, you can also guide them with different vocabulary words when it comes to naming, actions, what's going on in the book. Next, we can discuss what is read before turning each page. So the goal is not necessarily to finish reading the book, but the goal is to have the child experience the different stories and different meanings and understanding of the book. So before moving to the next page, let's see if your child, through ans asking those WH questions, if they understand what they were, um, what was read to them and they can get a better understanding of that page so that when they move on to the next page, they can make that connection and better understand the book that's being read to them. Then ask those open-ended questions, those open-ended questions where they, it doesn't lead to only a yes or no, but what, what do you think is going to happen next? Oh, on this page, which animal is jumping? Or what do you, how do you think that the pig feels? Different things so that it could allow the child to be able to answer using complete sentences. And also as the next bullet, the last bullet says, it helps to expand on what your child says and what your child knows. Next one here is use this time to nurture the joy of reading. Make it fun, you know, don't make it as though, okay, this is a task, let's sit down and read. If you're excited about reading, your child is going to be excited about reading. And the last one, while independent reading is always valuable, children of all ages also benefit from nightly reading together with an adult. You'll be surprised. I've worked with kids that are even in middle school and they love it when you read to them. It helps with their imagination, with focus, so read to your child. They love that attention from you as a parent or a guardian. Dialogic reading is a way to engage your child in conversations about a storybook to build your child's language and vocabulary. In the dialogic reading, the adult helps the child become the teller of the story. The adult becomes the listener, the questioner, and the audience for the child. So there's five different types of prompts that you can use for your child, and we'll go over it in the next slide using a children's classic book. We will use the book Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? to explain the five components. The first one is completion prompts. You will leave a blank at the end of a sentence and have your child fill it in. These are typically used in books with rhyme or books with repetitive phrases. For example, you might say, brown bear, brown bear, what do you? Letting your child fill in the blank with the word see. The benefit of this is that it encourages your child to listen and to use language. The next prompt is recall prompts. These are questions about what happened in the book that your child has already read. Recall prompts work for nearly everything except for alphabet books. For example, you might say, what are some animals in this book? Recall prompts help children in understanding story plot and in describing sequences of events. Recall prompts can be used not only at the end of a book, but also at the beginning of a book when a child has been read that book before. This helps to build a sense of the story and it helps your child to recall details. The next prompt is the open-ended prompt. These prompts can focus on pictures in the books. It should generate more than a single word response. For example, while looking at a page in a book that the child is familiar with, you might say, what is your favorite animal? What do you like about it? Open-ended prompts help children increase their expressive fluency and attend to details. It also helps to provide your child with opportunities to use language. Then we have the WH question prompts. These prompts usually begin with what, where, when, why, and how. For example, you might say, what animal is this? While pointing to the picture in the book. 
What sound would it make? Where would it live? Open-ended prompts help children increase their expressive fluency and attend to details. It also helps to build vocabulary. The last one is distancing prompts. These ask children to relate to the pictures, the words in the book that they are reading, to experiences outside the book. So for example, while looking at a book with a picture of animals on a farm, you might say something like, remember when we went to the farm? Which of these animals did we see? Open-ended prompts help children increase their expressive fluency, attend to details, and it helps with increasing vocabulary. Parents, here's a really popular pre-K um, three and four book. It's called From Head to Toe. This book basically describes how different animals move their bodies. So with this book, when you want to work with your child focusing on language, you can work on vocabulary in the areas of um, naming the animals, naming different body parts of the animals. You can also name body parts of your child's body parts so that they can uh, relate and make connections. You can also work on following directions. Um, you can work on how the, the animals move. And with the language, you can have them answer using more than one word utterances. And you can also focus on answering different what and who questions regarding this book. What makes it fun is not only when you finish reading the book, but you can also have different music that correlates with the book. So you could do this either before you read the book or after you read the book. And here are some different songs that you can find on YouTube. Uh, I know some of my kids, they really love uh, the song Animals Dance and Freeze. You can also use a very popular one, Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes. And then there's an Animals in Action, uh, Kids Body Parts by Jack Hartman. So incorporating the music, then you can also incorporate different arts and crafts. So this one is a picture of students using um, their body parts, uh, their hands and their feet to make different fish that's in the ocean. And kids really, really enjoy this. And this is great because you want to be able to not only just sit and read the book, but you want to use the fine motor skills. When it comes to the arts and craft, you want to use music. That helps to facilitate gross body um, movement as well. And the kids really make the connection when you're using these different strategies for a book. It makes it fun, and it also comes makes the book come alive, and it's relatable. Now this book is a pre-K 3, pre-K 4 favorite. You see it in every classroom, the very hungry uh, caterpillar. Now this book is about a caterpillar that eats its way through a variety of different foods. So with this book, you can facilitate different language skills, for example, vocabulary with naming the different foods, sequencing on which food the caterpillar ate first, different action words, categories of different types of food and the colors. You can also elicit comparing and contrasting uh, time of the day, the life cycle and WH questions and counting. So this book has a variety of different skills, language skills um, that could be incorporated. The music that you could facilitate is the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And then you can also look up different YouTubes of diff just different animals and food, right, that the child can be exposed to or that they saw while listening uh, to the book. Different arts and crafts that you can do, as you can see here, is, you know, making a, a caterpillar using paint. You can also incorporate uh, doing a, um, a poll at home pick the, maybe the top five different foods in the book and ask different family members which food that they like the most and they can tally and see which food was uh, the favorite in the, in the household. Or you can do um, categorizing of different types of food, different types of fruits, different types of vegetables. Uh, you could get a newspaper clipping or when you go to the grocery store, they have uh, different um, 
newspapers there or of different ads of food cut those out of different fruits, different vegetables, different meats, and have the your child categorize it as well. And that really helps with vocabulary. It helps with the fine motors that we talked about previously. And it allows them to, to be more involved in their learning. Here's another book called Whose Vehicle Is This? Whose Vehicle Is This? is a guessing game style of a nonfiction book. It's a book that introduces a variety of community helpers and their vehicles that they could see around the community. So community helpers is one of the themes that students learn when they're in pre-K 3 and pre-K 4. Um, and you could really facilitate a lot of language uh, goals with this book. You can talk about the vocabulary, about the community helpers, action words, you can incorporate um, teaching them your, your child's adjectives, prepositions, uh, again, facilitil facilitating those what, where, and who questions. Um, on the bottom that you could see here, um, a student drew the different types of transportation uh, that they're familiar with using a graphic organizer. Now, the graphic organizer is really helpful, and it could help students organize and prioritize what they are comprehending, what they understand. And through this visual organization, students are actually able to see the relationships and make connections to the information that they are reading and learning, which helps to improve their comprehension skills. This is a, a pretty popular book, The Three Little Bears. So with the three little bears, the language focus is you can teach your child about size concepts, different objects in the book, the functions of things, family members, and sequencing. And as you can see here, this is a different type of graphic or organizer compared to the, the last, the previous slide. So this one, what you can do is have your, your child draw the events of the story of what happened in the beginning, the middle, and also the end. Kids, some kids really like this because they like to draw. And then they are able to retell stories from the pictures that they, that they drew themselves. So it feels like as though they are an author <laughs> of, uh, of the book as well because they're they're involved so there's different types of strategies and fun activities that students could use in order to um, facilitate language this one here is for like first graders Pete and the cat and the cool caterpillar kids really like Pete and the cat so with this one Pete for this particular story, Pete thinks he found a new best friend, right? But when the caterpillar goes missing, Pete has to find out what happened to his new friend. So with this one, you can again ask those WH questions. Now we're um, moving into the first grade, so now the expectation is for you to have the different vocabulary words in order to just describe characters and pictures in the story, the ability to retell the story using key details, and discuss how the characters feel in the story. And then with retelling the story using key details, you can always use the graphic organizer that we talked about previously of what was happening um, in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, and also with sequencing. With the same book, you can make it relatable with going to uh, making a safari in your in your backyard you can draw different pictures of uh, the items that are in the book and maybe hide them in your house or in your backyard and they could go hunting for it that would be so much fun uh, you could facilitate the counting of the bugs that you find and describe them. You can also talk about the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. You can also use uh, the graphic organizer to show uh, the life cycle of the, the caterpillar. And you could go on YouTube and look at different videos of the life cycle and then have your child draw in the life cycle of a butterfly or the life cycle of the, of the, the caterpillar as well. So here's a, a chapter book, Charlotte's Web. It's a children's book classic. 
Um, it's about Charlotte's um, web high in the Zuckerman's barn. Charlotte's spiderweb tells of uh, her feelings and for a little pig named Wilbur who simply wants a friend. This is a really nice novel of friendship, love, life, and also death. So again, we can facilitate those answering WH questions. Now we're in the second uh, grade. The expectation uh, is higher. So now we're going to talk about predicting what will happen, uh, recounting the story and discuss the central lesson or the message in the story. We can also describe the characters and respond to the events of the challenges that are in the story. So how can we make this story come alive or make it relatable? You can visit a zoo or a farm and talk about the different animals, or you can go on YouTube and um, look up different videos uh, that talks about or shows different um, farm animals and zoo animals. You could create a spider web word wall uh, with the different vocabularies that's in the book. So the, voca the book has a lot of great vocabulary such as humble, radiant. So you might wanna go over those vocabulary words either before with, with your child or while reading the book. You can make a red barn with construction paper. There's that fine motor skill that helps to elicit language as well. And you can draw the Charlotte and Wilbur writing words that describe what's going on in, in the book. Should a parent read to their child in their native language? Absolutely yes. <laughs> The theory is that if a child is having difficulty communicating, then two language would make matters worse. The number of languages a child speaks does not contribute to communication deficits. When parents read to their children in their language, the child's overall language skills increases in frequency and complexity. So it's very important that if your child is learning a new language, English, that you can read to them in their primary language. In conclusion, DCPS family, I've ho hoped you enjoyed and learned a lot within this presentation. And remember that reading books aloud to children stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. It helps them to develop language, listening skills, and prepares them to understand the written word. Even after children learn to read by themselves, it's still important for you to read out loud together.